Hey guys, welcome along. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And today we've got another review for you. So if you don't want to see another review, switch off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, lots of reviews going on at the moment because I've got lots of stuff coming in and I've bought lots of stuff. So this one is a, one of my Christmas presents to myself. This is a kit I bought from uh, BNA Model World uh, via eBay. And via eBay, this company are known as A Modeler. Um, a underscore, I think, Modeler. If you are in the UK, don't be frightened to buy them from them. Yes, they're the other side of the world, but their packaging is amazing. Their prices are amazing. Custom service is amazing. Um, so, yeah, here's the here's the kit. And I haven't opened it yet. It's still sealed up in the box, as you can see. Still sealed up, never opened. And very, very well packaged. And it's got here absolutely fine. It took a oh, seven weeks, I think to get here but at the moment the way things are with everything um, there aren't many flights leaving Australia bound for the UK so basically this um, ended up around I think the 18th of December I think it was ended up going to the airport and it got stuck there until I mean literally it left there on Friday and I got it Tuesday so once they get their ass in gear it's bang it's, it's done it's here and England seem to be pushing them through quickly as well. So without further ado, we're going to get to the bench and get this cut open and see what's inside. So I'm doing this as a totally fresh, unrehearsed, never seen this kit, never seen a build of it. I've seen a few pictures of it finished. It is a 12 scale Lancia 037. Um, it is not a Martini one. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of a Martini one. These model factory hero kits, I've realised that they come in and they go. Um, and then when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, some are re-released, some aren't. So I wanted an 037, I wanted a 12 scale 037. I would have rather had a martini car, but this was all that was available. Unless I wanted to spend more than twice the money, I've got this one. It's an 037, so I may even contact Model Factory Hero and find out if I can buy the parts and the decals to turn this into an Evo 2 martini colour. So uh, we shall see, but anyway, We'll get this box open. Um, as I say, this is as much about the safety, the packaging and how good BNR, BNA are. I've used them quite a few times now and they are well worth considering if you look at it making a big purchase. So let's get to the bench. Right, so here we have our box. Great big box as it is, all the labels removed. And let's get in and have a look. So this is pretty exciting, I've got to be honest. It's pretty exciting stuff. I've never had a Model Factory Hero kit. I've never seen one in the flesh. I've only ever seen them on Car Modeling Tube. And there's a guy on there, check out his channel. There's videos every single day and generally builds Model Factory Hero kits. Now, if I see anything like invoices that show anything, then I'll just switch the camera off. But we've got some lovely white paper there. And as I say, this is all about how fantastically BNA Model will package everything up. I mean, look at this, there are two, four layers of air bubbles and then we've got the actual model itself which is wrapped in bubble wrap by the look of it so if I turn the box over and get this out there we go let's get that out on the bench and there's probably more bubble wrap underneath it and there we go so that has come from Japan to Australia from Australia to me and it is in absolutely perfect condition even the corners of the boxes are okay boxes box so I've got a feeling this bubble wrap has been put on yeah this bubble wrap you can see on the end here it's got the sticker this bubble wrap has been put on by Model Factory Hero so it's been very very lovingly done because they are very lovingly doing kind of people. Remember I did those tires I got from them, you know, and there was a, a little special handwritten note um, saying thank you for the purchase, enjoy your model, and there was some origami in that, so maybe this will have the same, I don't know, but um, all I know is this is going to be an absolutely stunning kit, and it could be quite a long review. So it's a generic box, as you can see, um, and then on the end here it just says what it is. Lancia's Rally 037 version D, that's it. That's all we've got. So 
This is my first opening of this box. What's it going to be like in here? It's going to be amazing. I just know it's going to be amazing. Right, so that's that done. Let's get rid of all this stuff and uh, come back. Right, so we have our nice glossy box here, which is playing absolute havoc with the camera and the lighting. So we'll get this open and we shall see what is inside. Oh, look. Oh, look. Very, very nice indeed. So we've got resin parts there. So we've got the uh, the hood and the, um, and the rear cowl there. Main center section of the body. So a uh, real proper 037 with the strengthening in there and everything. We've also got the 037 type floor. Remember the group five. Um, so you've got the group five Vita Monte Carlo and the um, Giro d'Italia car, they had an aluminium floor, but this actually kept the steel floor from the from the steel from the actual body shell of the car. Based on a Lancia Monte Carlo, if you didn't know. Um, here we've got some tires by the look of it. Yeah, tires in there all wrapped up. There's five of them in there. Bag of bits and pieces, cables, wires, springs, screws, nuts, rear valance. And then a lovely plastic box full of resin parts, all beautifully cast and really, really sharply made and all still on their sprues as well. Then we have a high quality plastic wallet, which is really nicely done. We've got in there instructions, we've got some reflective material, we'll have a look through there in a second. And then in the bottom here we've got another box. So that's a, like a lid. And in here we've got turned aluminium wheel rims. Stunning. And then we have these cards and attached to them, that's attached to the bottom. And these are all the white metal parts. So this is basically all the parts of the kit. This weighs a ton. And this is all white metal. And um, you can see we've got the wheel centers there. We've got drive shafts. The CV boots on the end, you've got parts of suspension framework. This whole thing is a tubular space frame if you look at it. We've got the centre uh, tunnel there, all in white metal. And then the same going over here. This is basically all bags attached to card and wrapped up in cling film. I won't be opening any of these. Um, yes, I will. Yes, I will. And uh, you can see here the beauty of these parts. So I can, I've got a feeling this is going to go on a while. So you might want to pause this now and go and get yourself a beer or a cup of coffee or something because, uh, as I say, I think this might go on. Okay, so as per usual my reviews, first things first, we'll have a look at the instructions. And as you can see, this is not just instructions, this is all sorts in here. And it's all come in this beautiful, it's beautiful, is it? But it's just thoughtful plastic wallet to protect everything. So we open up the plastic wallet and as you can see, we've got in one side, we've got the instruction manual, which we'll look at now. And then in here, we've got lots and lots of pieces which we'll look at in a minute. But first of all, let's have a look at this instruction manual. So I'll put this wallet out of the way. So I'm pleased to say the instruction manual is not at all glossy. So that's nice, I can bring the light back in. Right, so, front of the page, this is the one I've got, version D. And this is Mickey Biazion and Severo um, from Round 10, 1983, World Rally Championship. Um, San Remo, so um, this would have been, hopefully it's in tarmac spec, so uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful model in the toe tip um, colours, as I say, probably would rather have had martini colours, but hey ho, you know, looking at this, it does look lovely, doesn't it, and it's nice to have something a bit different, I guess, there may be some aftermarket um, decals for, a, for an Allen car or something, we shall see, so basically, sort of standard, sort of instruction manual, with the you know the, the Japanese down one side and we've got the English down the right hand side with some uh, tips and stuff on, on building it like there is a chance there would be white specks on the surface of black resin parts so I'm guessing that's tires just tell you to just brush them off with a toothbrush and some cleaner um, use super glue or epoxy resin when building um, put the decals in the file holder and keep them dry cool place so don't put it in your loft guys um, it's, it's intended for over 16 year olds so I think I'm just about over 16 so I think we're all right um, you can change the shape of the resin, um, however please do not 
please do not slowly and do not bend the parts too fast. So basically you can just put them in under warm water and just gently pry them and they will uh, they will come back to their shape. But I'm sure that this was so well packaged, I'm sure everything will be fine. Parts list here. Um, with stuff like this, guys, I would suggest, as I would with like HPH kits and stuff, which I will do here, go through all your parts and make sure everything is here. Because if you stick it in your stash, you might get it out in a couple of years' time. You find you've got a part missing. You get in touch with Bottle Factory Hero. Sorry, we no longer produce that kit. You know, you're stuck. It's your own fault. So make sure you, you know, check all this through as soon as you get it while the kit is still in production. In fact, this kit is no longer in production. Um, they've sold out. <clears throat> but they may have some spares left, so uh, there you go. And then coming down here, we have the um, colour callouts, and this is all in Mr. Hobby Gunsanio. This is the um, the actual lacquer paints. This isn't their aqueous. I'll show you what I mean here. So we've got, let's just get one out because they're right in the back. You can see this is your aqueous Mr. Colour. Hobby colour, yeah, water-based acrylic paint. And then this is Mr. Colour, okay? So this is Mr. Hobby colour, this is Mr. Colour, and these are the, um, these are actual lacquer paints. They are bloody wonderful as well. They, they're very much like, like Tamiya lacquer paints. Um, but again, as with, with most cars, the colours are sort of pretty generic. Um, you know, you don't have RLM02 or FS36168, whatever. They're you know, red, blue, black, steel, aluminium. So, you know, you can... I mean, I, I will use Tamiya lacquer paints on this. Um, you know, yet if you spot any yellow on my fingers, guys, it's not because I've taken up smoking or I've just gone through a rapeseed field. Um, it's because I've just painted the yellow stripes on my Stuka. So, <clears throat> I'm just waiting for that to dry so I can mask it off. So anyway, there we go. So there's the instruction manual. So going into the instruction manual, looks like it's not stapled together. So I guess that's a good idea, really, because then you can just have one page on the bench. So going into the instruction manual here, all beautifully laid out. One of these kits, I see this very much like a Wingnut Wings kit. Um, it's not just about the model itself, and it's not just about the finished article. It's all about the experience of the building. It's the... You know the instruction manual, how it all goes together, and the the journey they take you through while building the model. And these things are really, really super detailed. I don't think we need to add anything. So, and and we will see. There's there's nothing at all in this kit that will be toy like. We don't have. This is one thing I can't bear with Tamiya kits when they have all the screws sticking out, especially that Meng GT40. It's ridiculous the amount of screws. He's got these great big Phillips head screws sticking out everywhere where there would have been nuts and bolts so it can be dealt with but it's just a shame they don't deal with it um, but anyway beautiful colour instructions as you can see all sort of computer drawn by the look of it but um, <clears throat> building up here the front subframe I've got a frog in my throat hang on right that's better so we're into the um, front subframe here so we've got the actual lower part of the subframe we've got some pieces going in here that's that's just a cross member little bits and pieces of greeblies we've got the side pieces of the water cooling pipes by the look of it and then we've got the steering rack there going in um, and another part of it there and then we've got the front suspension dampers going together so you need to be an experienced modeler to build one of these guys this is not a beginner's kit now already I'm kind of looking at this and I think what they're showing us here is M274 this is how it comes on the sprue, the white metal sprue, and you cut them off and that goes through there. And this is what I'm saying, like I've just mentioned a few seconds ago, you know, Tamiya or Meng or whatever would have a screw going through there with the Phillips head on it. They've actually got a white metal bolt. So you've actually got a bolt head, you know, and it's a flanged bolt as well as the real thing would be rather than a bloody Phillips screw, um, which is a really nice touch. And then down here we've got screws going in. I'm not sure if they're going to be actual screws, but it's telling you what the thread size is well. So we can go in there and we can use, get yourself one of these little three-piece mini, a 31-piece mini tap and die set. Absolutely, this has come in so handy for a lot of stuff that I've done. And it's it's brilliant. Got it in there upside down. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and as you can see in there, you've got tiny taps, tiny dies, and it's basically... Uh, M1 to M2.5 so actually brilliant for stuff like this 
and bearing in mind a lot of this is white metal all of the holes are going to have to be drilled out some are going to have to be tapped out i think as i say go to go and watch car modeling tube and you watch that guy put it to, put one of these together not one of these but lots and lots of model factory hero kits and um it's it's absolutely amazing he does a video every single day go and have a look give him a subscribe he deserves it so here we've got the suspension going together then we've got the forward or the rear end of the subframe going on and then the battery's going in there um, and you can see we've actually got separate white metal battery terminals as well and then we're, we're probably going to have cables coming out of there we've got screws holding this together we've got more screws going in there it's going to be a lovely strong um, front subframe I can assure you those screws will not be visible on the finished model um, I'm guessing then we've got the uh, it's also nice to see it doesn't have workable front suspension so that's nice they haven't gone for the workable suspension thing so it's all going to be nice and strong and solid and not all just want to be wobbly and saggy and falling apart i'm sure it's going to have steerable wheels but not suspension um so here we've got the upper wishbones going in and then we've got the track rod ends going onto the steering uh, steering rack building up our disc brakes hopefully they've got the vents and everything right you know my problems with that We've got the actual bell on there as well, so you've got a separate disc, separate aluminium bell, and then the calipers in two halves going on to the front up right there. Um, and then we've got the actual nickel wire. These are the <laughs> this is the wire that holds the brake pads in. That's the extent of the detail on this. Building up this beautiful frame here for the electric fan. Um, and then you've got some uh, photo etched by the look of it going into there, into the radiator frame, and that's actually going to make up our radiator. Uh, for coolant and then we've got a bash plate here with a front bar going across the mount for the radiator um, and that's all there and then we've got some ducting going here either side of the radiator uh, and that's going to be for the oil cooler and you can see here we've got a spring and I'm not exactly sure what that spring is going to be for but there may be like a flap or something that they can open and close um, to keep debris whatever from the oil cooler uh, we've got a photo etch part going in there. It looks like that might be the horn going on the side. And again, we've got these bolts going in, bolts rather than screws. So it's gonna, all going to look amazing. And then we've got the radiator hoses at the bottom here, all made in white metal. We'll have to do some painting in there and paint the bands and everything and connect that up into the bottom of the radiator. Brake cooling ducts go in. Hopefully they're going to be nice and soft and flexible, unlike the main ones that are just, as soon as you turn them anything more than nine, 10 degrees, they just collapse. Then we've got a gear stick going together and you can see here the gear stick is mounted on a spring and then held down with screws with a plate and screws oh, no it's a flat rivet it's a rivet so you're not going to see screws everywhere and then the gear stick's going to have uh, proper movement in it by the look of things or it's just put there because that's how it is on the real thing um so we've got the gear shifter going in there we've got the uh what's this here heat shrinkable tube black please heat the tube after after attach, so you're going to put the heat shrink over the handbrake there and then shrink it on there so that's a nice touch uh, we've got the some switch gear going on here we've got rivets going in there holding it together some switches going in and then we've got a unit here this is going to be a hydraulics I'm guessing that is going to be something to do with hydraulics for the handbrake um, looks like there's two of them this is what I'm saying you've got to work all this out as we go through and then we're going to put all this in um, put this into the floor pan, we've got this, the astral master cylinder there for the handbrake uh, on, the, on the back of the handbrake and that's going in there all very very nicely done, we've got the um, co-driver's footrest then we've got the rear bulkhead going in um, and we're using this embossed silver sticker so that's, uh, that's going to be the heat shielding and then we're building up a harness here uh, it's, yeah, it's telling us to make two, so we've got two harnesses the usual sort of thing, photo etch buckles, looks like we've got a white metal main clip on there and then we've got the uh, the actual straps themselves going in and we've got double-sided tape going on there for i'm guessing that's holding in the um the uh label the manufacturer's labeling seats we've got bits and pieces for the seats for the mountings it's all bolts as you can see so you've got actual full side you know you're not just sticking a seat into a floor pan you've actually got the actual seat mount brackets with the bolts in there and you can see all that here which is beautifully done um, we've got the harness mounts here going on to the rear bulkhead M253 this is showing us all our bolts here so we've actually got bolt heads rather than the screws which is a nice touch we've got fire extinguisher there so we've got plumbed in and handheld by the look of it 
or that might be a cylinder for something else. We might have an AccuSump or something. And then we've got the roll cage going together. And then we've got the um, instrument panels, is this? I'm guessing this is instrument, yes, instrument panels, early type and late type. Um, please refer to material which you have. So I'm guessing this is going to be early type because I think this is an Evo 1 car. But um, basically you've got the same actual instrument panel itself. But then you've got a different switch and fuse panel here. So this is the early type. So you've got a clear sheet going over them. So it's, that's just going to be fuses in there. You've got a decal going on. So that's going to be fuses. And then this is going to be the later type. So this is probably going to be all the little glass type fuses. And this is the later plastic sort of two pronged ones. Um, and then we've got more rivets going into the dashboard here. Not sure if these dashboards were flocked. I can't remember. Um, as I say, loads of reference. I've got books somewhere. I'll have to dig them out. Um, pedal assembly here going together. You can see you've got the separate pedals, separate master cylinders all going in and actual pivot bolts there. Um, again, absolutely beautiful. Finishing off the instrument panel here. Building up the steering column with the um, indicator switches and everything. Cutting some clear sheet there for the actual rear window in the, um, in the actual central tub. And then we're adding the steering column and the pedal boxes. Adding a plate in underneath there. And adding in the actual windscreen, which is actually a vacuum formed part. Then we've got here, we've got the bits and pieces, greeblies, um, slave, not slave cylinders, uh, reservoirs is the word I'm looking for, for the brake and clutch. Um, we've got some stiffening pieces there going in the corners, actual wiper going on there. Windscreen wash ejects by the look of things, another wiper going on there. Oh Jesus. And then we've got the doors going together here, door hinges. Again, we've got screws holding that together, so that's going to be nice and strong. You've got a window frame there. I'm not sure what that's going to be made of. It just says window frame. Uh, it might be photo etch. And then we've got the clear part going in the side there. And then we've got the slider mechanism for the window, for the clear part. Absolutely amazing. Looks like that window will actually open. And then the door mirror is going on there. Um, and they're asking us to put a piece of nickel silver wire in there. Um, and then assemble the same way on the opposite side. Fitting our doors into our central tub there, or fitting the actual roof part onto the floor pan, and then fitting the doors. This is templates for the actual um, reflective material. So that's nice, we've got templates there for that. So, moving along, we're going to start on our engine now. So the engine going together, we've got separate cylinder heads, separate cam boxes, cam covers. We've got the distributor on the end there, or is that the fuel pump? Uh, I'm not sure if that's distributor, I think that's distributor. Uh, and then we've got our supercharger going together there. Um, sump going on, head going on to the block. Uh, rear cover going on there. Engine mounts going on the sides. So that's all nice touching on the front. We've got the front cover going on. Water pump and alternator by the look of things. And then we've got, what's this here? That's going to be our oil pump because I think this is dry sumped. And then we've got the Volumex supercharger made up. We've got uh, what looks like an oil filter going on the front of it there. And then we've got the intake. Now, I believe because this is version D, this is the Evo 1, I believe this is carburetor, not injected. So we shall see. Um, don't take my word for it. So we've got version D here, and then this is version E and F. So the kit I've got is version D. So whether we get the parts to do that, if we want to, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to have a look. Um, and then coming down here, you can see we've got all the pulleys here for all the ancillary drives, cam drives, tensioners, crank pulley there. And we've got an actual cam belt. Yes, we have an actual cam belt going on there. And then we've got another belt here, which is going to drive the oil pump, is that? Or the fuel pump? It looks like it might have fuel injection then. Um, and then we've got another belt there, which is going to drive the alternator. And probably power steering, whatever, if it had it. So there we go. <laughs> Amazing. And then we've got another belt going on there. So, and we've got water pipes and more pulleys. So you can see this thing is just covered in belts. So there's our version D engine and there's our version E. So it is fuel injected. Um, it's telling us to add the different color tubing. So we've got the plug bars there, we've got black tube, we've got base string, nickel silver wire and clear tube. So you can imagine this thing's gonna look absolutely stunning. And then building up our exhaust manifold there and adding that in, or headers if you're in the USA. And then we've got some, um, looks like a turbo, that's a drain pipe for the supercharger. And then we've got another drain pipe there. 
So uh, all very nice going together. Gearbox going together, or transaction should I say. We've actually got the transaction itself going in. Then we've got the actual flywheel and then the heat, the metal shields, the dust shields going in behind there, behind the uh, behind the flywheel. Then we've got the rear mount, version D, version E and F. So we've got two different parts there. Remember this kit is version D. And then we've got the actual um, slave cylinder for the clutch going there with all the actuator on there and everything. We've got, even got a spring for a return spring. Um, bits and pieces going on the side of the transaxle there. And then we're starting now on the rear suspension. So we've got fuel tanks going in the sides, the actual base of the rear suspension, and then the uprights for the shock mounts. Plates going in the side to protect all the metal work. This would be great if you want to super detail your little 24 scale kit because you've got all the reference here. Um, then that's going to be an oil tank for the dry sump by the look of it. And then that's going to be, I don't know what that is. That's going to be some sort of reservoir for something or other. We shall soon see when we build it. Um, we've got screws holding the engine actually into the bottom there. So that's going to be all nice and solid. And then we're adding on here as a trans transmission cooler. Um, the mesh hose. We've got braided hoses for the transmission cooler. And then this here, whatever this is, I'm not sure. Heat shrinkable tube. Do, 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 do. Not sure what that is coming out of the back. Um, that could well be an intake for the uh, supercharger. I'm not sure. Oh, it's probably a dump valve. Probably a dump valve, yeah. Or is that an intercooler there, not an oil cooler? I don't know what I'm bloody talking about. Anyway, we shall see as we go through. Um, adding in the drive shafts, we've got the CV joints at the ends. Metal plate there to protect the fuel tanks from splashes, showing you which to use for your drive shaft left and right. Again, building up the brakes with the separate bell. Two halves of the caliper. You've got two calipers on the back, one for the handbrake, one for the hydraulic brake for the foot brake. Uh, and then you've got the actual metal wire there holding the brake pads in. Uh, coil spring, damper, um, uprights. We've got twin shocks on the room. Remember, the Group B cars had twin shocks. I think the road cars only had the one. Um, then we've got an anti-roll bar going on the back there. Exhaust system being up here, built up here with the silencer and everything and the pipes going in. And then we're going to add... Yeah, we're adding the front end now. This is all the front suspension and everything going into the front of the car. And then we're... That's all got on there. So we've got screws going underneath, is showing you here. And then screws going in from the front here, holding it all together. And then you've got plates going down to cover up those screws. Spare wheel going in there and the straps that hold it in. So that's a nice touch. You've got a pin there with that ratchet strap on there. Then we've got some greeblies, some tanks. That's going to be tanks for something, whether coolant and whatever, God knows. And then you're screwing that into the back there, of the actual body itself. Then we're going to add these side panels on. You could have these clipping on and off if you want to, so you can expose the fuel tanks and everything. And then you've got different exhaust systems here, I'm guessing, or is this intake systems? Version F, version E. We're not mentioning version D. Strange. So we've got intakes here. These are the air filters. So we've got version F, version E. Version F, version E. No mention of version D, so I don't know what I'm doing for mine. I'm sure we'll work it out. Headlights going together, so we've got the actual bowl itself, we've got a mounting ring, you've got the little clasps there that hold the headlight in place for the alignment, and then you've got the actual bulb going in there, and then the lens going on itself. Have you ever seen such a complex headlamp assembly on a model car? Mental. And then we've got our side lights and indicators going in here, with the little strengthening strap holding it on, and then we've got side markers going in there, radiator grill, volume X badge going on there. All very, very nice. That'll have to be polished up and painted in chrome or whatever. Um, this is for version EF only. Okay, so maybe the old, the older ones didn't have that grill. Um, and then we've got a grill going on there on the front of the bonnet. Is that a grill? Yes, it is by the look of things. And then we've got hinges here with actual pins in, um, rather than um, rather than having a bolt through there or screw or anything. Actual proper hinges, so that'll hinge up beautifully. And then we've got our, we're actually building up bonnet pins. Can you believe it? One, two, three, four parts to make up a bonnet ring. Uh, um, 
a bonnet pin absolutely incredible and then we've got the grills going across the back of the uh, the bonnet there or the hood and then we've got the plates going in here I'm guessing that's going to be for our hinges so the actual front is hinged up but the actual bonnet the actual bonnet part can actually be hinged up as well starting on the rear clam now on the rear shell um, got a stiffener plate going in there air intakes going on the sides and then we've got the great big rear spoiler we've got the big mesh part at the back uh, which is going to have some sponsors name on it I think and then we've got the rear valance going on there, which the Evo 2 didn't actually have so this is version D only so if you want to make a, a, a fake later one you can I think you can just leave parts off and make it look make it look like a later car um, so you've got the white sheet there for the mud flaps uh, we've got our rear lights there so you've got an actual back in there you've got an etched inner and then you've got the actual um Yes, yeah, so same pre-printed photo etched parts and this is just a clear lens and you have to paint that yourself in clear red and clear orange and then we've got the hinges here for the actual rear end going on um, again you've got a pin going through a screw on the inside so it's not going to be seen um, and then you've got the rear uh, glazing going in there and we've got a stiffener plate going in there so that's all going to look lovely and again we've got bonnet pins holding all that down as well so that's a very nice touch and then we're going to fit all that onto the rear of the body and then finally going over the page we have the wheels being built up so this is version E and F uh, with the wheel centers going into there um, version D do, 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 it's different parts M316, M324. So yeah, we have different wheels for the rear. It looks like we've got the same wheels for the front on version D. Uh, when M272 is long to contact over tire, please shave and adjust the height. Now I did ask, um, I don't know what his name is, I must ask his name. The guy who does the car modeling tube channel, I asked, he always uses super glue, and I asked him about longevity of the models and do they stay together? Because um, as we all know, super glue dries out with age and tends to go brittle. And he thoroughly recommends these spacers they give you for the floor. Uh, I think Tamiya do this with the Ref1 car kits. And they basically give you these spacers so that the car, the model, when it's actually sitting on a shelf, is sitting on these spacers rather than sitting on its own suspension. And he said then it's absolutely fine. Uh, I remember I had a Porsche Ferrari once and that used to sit on its own suspension. And in the end, it all just sagged just gave up and it just sat down like a low rider so I sold it <laughs> um, and then it says please use your metallic rod as a stopper so whether you've got to get, add your own metallic rod I don't know for the uh, for holding the back the bake up the bake the back up so there we are so that's the instructions so Chris from uh, rally car managers <laughs> no rally car miniatures will be loving this so let's have a look at some of the parts oh let's finish looking through here first so that was our um, template so that was our template for actually cutting out our um, heat shield, the, you know, the, the, the shiny protective stuff. So that's that. So we can put those back in there. So this is here. This is the said heat shield. So, whoops. So this is basically self-adhesive. You can see it's got that pattern on it. For the heat shield, so that's going to come in handy. Hopefully, I'll have some spare for other stuff. That'll be nice. Here we've got our photo etch part. So you can see there we've got a pre-coloured the rear deck, the rear deck panel. You see Pirelli got Pirelli on it, uh, and then we've got the photo etch parts here, which are all stainless steel. Through so all our buckles and everything there, some supports, bits and pieces, headlight rings. By the look of it, all very beautifully done. All beautifully etched and all beautifully packaged we've got some window masks here or is that window frames I'm not sure what they're for I'm not sure if they're masks or what they are but you can see they're basically window shapes cut out of paper so I'm, I'm assuming they're probably masks then we've got another great big piece of photo etch here so this is our we've got some grills here for the radiator that's a grill there for the front radiator by the look of it. Toe tip there, toe tip sponsored um, and painted etch. That's the big grill grill across the front of the bonnet. And then we've got some bits here, I'm not sure what they are. We've got some straps here, all very nicely done. Uh, that's going to be part of our intake. We've got some more straps there, 
more mesh. That's our actual electric radiator there. You can see in the middle. But um, and then we've got some rings here for the wheels by the look of it, for the rear wheels. Part of the dashboard. That's going to be a, la a, um, a rally badge there going on. And then a martini. It looks like a martini stencil for painting or something. I didn't see that in the instructions. But uh, we've got some wing nuts there by the look of it. And there. So yeah, very, uh, very thoroughly done. And then here we have our beautiful decal sheet. So this is the 25th Rally San Remo, car number 18, um, driven by Biaz Young. And then we've got the Jolly Club colours there, the green and the, and the um, orange, which can look lovely on the white background, all the toe tip everywhere. And then we've got Fiat Pirelli. You can see, beautifully done. I've watched the guy from Car Modeling Tube use these decals and they look to be amazing to work with. He basically wets them, gets the paper, Woof, onto the bonnet and then just starts pushing it all around with his finger and rolling it out and push. it looks like he's just so abusive with it it's, uh, it looks like they're very very tough so um and then here we've got our color guide so this is all our decal placement um and sponsors placement and all that so very nice indeed looks like with the width of the wheels and everything we have got a tarmac spec which is the main thing i wouldn't want a gravel spec um car in this sort of scale i think it would, especially in, because the next kit I want to get from them, if I can ever find one, is a um, a Delta S4. And that's what made me buy this, because I realised they stopped making a Delta S4. And if you want one, you can get one for like a £1,000. Um, but the actual proper price should be about 500 So uh, I've got to wait for them to re-release it. I emailed them and said, will you re-release it? And they said, maybe one day. So who knows? So there's that. Now, look at that. As I say, that is beautifully presented in that wallet really really nice beautifully done so let's have a look at some parts so this is our bag of tires we try and open this so I can reseal it all again because I'm like that and we know what their tires are like because we had those beautiful tires for our F1 car from them so we can see here we've got the tires there's the spare with nothing printed on they are hollow and you can see here we've got the Pirelli actually printed on them painted on them so they're going to look absolutely stunning on the model give them a nice rub down we've also got the uh, the wear indicators on there as well and then the nice fat rear tires you'll see the difference front and rear tires nice big fat back ones again with Pirelli on there beautifully done really really nice I'm not going to open to the atmosphere because they may start to go off I don't know If you've built one of these kits, if you've built a Model Factory Hero kit, drop me a comment below, let me know, because uh, I'd love to know your experience with them. Um, you know, and, and please bear in mind, if you're gonna if you're gonna turn around and say, oh, it's absolutely awful, real struggle to put together, you know? It was my first ever model. But that's not really acceptable <laughs> as a judgment for Model Factory Hero. So get this bag open here. So this looks like it's actually, yeah, this is actually a bubble wrap bag. Jess has come to join in. She's nosy. She wants to see what's in the bag because it may be edible. Well, everything's edible in her shoes. So we have got a bag here of a million parts. So there's our lovely cast resin rear valance, which we may decide not to use because they do look good with that off. Um, so we've got a bag here of our clear parts. So you can see here, if I open this up, I'm just keep an eye on the time. So we've got a bag here with clear parts, and you can see they're, come on, they're all lovely. They're all resin. Cast, they obviously don't have injection moulding facilities at this point. So we've got here, we've got light bulbs here. Light bulbs, and we've got the side repeaters the side marker lights there but these are all the light bulbs that are going to go inside our headlights so they're very lovely and then we've got clear parts for our I'm not sure what that is I remember that in the instructions that's some sort of reservoir and we've got the header tank there for the coolant as you can see it's done with like a frosty 
finish to it so it looks like a real clear tank whether we paint half of it in green or something so it looks like it's got antifreeze in it and then we've got our front indicators and side lights there which we're going to paint in the clear orange which is very very lovely then we've got from here we've got the actual rear lights which have got the the actual pattern in them you can see they've got the pattern in them there of the reflectors very nice indeed and then we've got more header tanks and then we've got all our reservoirs there for our clutch and uh, brake reservoirs you can see they're beautifully molded here's my bit of wood here's my bit of wood you can see they're beautifully molded with the lids and everything on them quite difficult to see because they're clear so that's that and then here we've got some very clear parts molded in resin but very very clear by the look of it and these are oh no, these are these are our window frames so let's get these on here these are our window frames for our sliders for our door windows so whoops chuck them across the place there so we get that hold that down you can see it from the side then you can see it's got that sort of um, windshield on it to stop the wind blowing in all over the all over the driver and co-driver and they were held in place with rivets if I remember rightly so that's going to be quite fun then we've got a vacuum formed or is that cast? That's actually cast. I'm not going to get it out because I don't want to scratch it. Let's just have a quick look at it. See how clear it is. This is our rear engine cover. This is the rear screen. And we can see that looks lovely. And that is very awesome. Having had a Group 5 Monte Carlo myself, that looks very... It's, it's, it's actually a piece of Perspex which is um, blown. And it gets this kind of uneven look to it so that is very authentic if it was crystal clear and dead flat it would look fake but that is actually how they are in the early days they were molded or blown or whatever and they were um jess out sorry jess was trying to get in the box then so as i was saying yeah they were they were um molded and heat molded and then they had that kind of uneven finish to them you know very much like a vac form you see a vac form canopy or something and the edges around it are all a bit uneven it's like that so here we've got our headlights so these are sealed bags i'm not going to open them so we've got turned aluminium headlights so you can see they're absolutely gorgeous we've got our resin um lenses there with all the molding on them so they've got the proper proper finish on them for the um diffusers and that for the headlights so you can see there they've got the actual molding on them which is very nice indeed I've never seen such complex headlamp assemblies in a model car I need to protect that for some I'm gonna wrap something around that before I put it away and then here we've got um, some belts so these are our cam belts and everything so with the group 5 you actually get tooth tooth cam belts with this you don't get tooth belts you just get in belts so I, well, I, I think We've got some heat shrink here. I remember seeing that in the instructions, red and black heat shrink. Um, but yeah, very, very nice indeed to think they've actually gone to the trouble of making these belts for us. So the engine's going to look stunning. Unfortunately, you're not going to see any of it because it's all going to be up against the bulkhead. Here we've got our um, beautifully made seat belts. This is really, really nicely made. So you've got black strap in there. I'm sure that's going to be for holding down the spare wheel. And then we've got the... Um, the say belt stickers there, the say belt parts, which would have been wrapped around the uh, seat belt or be stitched on seat belt material itself. And then here we've got some double sided tape in there to um, stick them all together. I'm guessing, I'm guessing what's that? That's what that's for. So here we've got aha. Well, that's um, that's actually molded. So in here we've got this is our um, heat or our air ducting. And instead of doing like the Tamiya or the Meng way, they've actually molded it. So you don't have to worry about it collapsing on bends and stuff. Like the Tamiya stuff, you try and bend it like that, it would just collapse on itself. So they've actually made that as a molded part, which is a nice touch. And then here we have, I'm assuming that's plug caps. 
I'm assuming that spark plug caps there. One, two, three, four, five. It may actually be uh, valve caps for the wheels. But uh, we shall see. So that's all very nice. And we've got our bag here. We've got some... Um, some more heat shrink by the look of it. We've got braided line there, we've got wire, we've got some finer wire, we've got some really fine clear tubing there. Um, of course if you want to go to town and add loads of stuff on this you could. I don't really think you need to. But um, yeah all the different, you can see all the different sizes in there. So you can go to town on that. We've got some various different diameters of wire. Which is nickel silver by the feel of it because it's quite strong. We've got here, <laughs> in here we've got rivets. So you can see in there that's all our rivets and pins and everything. So that's rather than having big screws everywhere, which is really nice. We have here a bag of springs, and as you can see, these are dual rate springs. Let's get them on there. You can see what Proper dual rate springs there, so you've got the open coils at the bottom there, and then it goes up into a tightly bound coil at the top. And then these are just standard springs. They're very, very strong, actually. They are lovely. They're proper scale size springs rather than the flimsy little things you get in a lot of other kits. Um, we have here clear parts. Okay, so this will get you guys. I don't know if you can see that in there. But in this bag here, you have clear round parts. That's the glazing for the instrument dials. Yes, that's how far this kit goes. And then we've got clear sheet there. I think that's just basically offcuts of clear sheet that you actually cut out yourself with templates. We have here, these have actually become attached somehow. Oh, it's the magnets. So we have here. We have more tiny, tiny rivets there. We have some tiny, tiny springs in the second compartment. You can see those there, tiny, tiny little springs. And then there's, that looks like that's the bottom of the antenna there, turned aluminium. We've got some rings here. Not exactly sure what they're going to be for, but we've got rings anyway. We've got some longer bolts here. It looks like they've actually got hexagonal heads as well. Oh no, they're just round. We've got some longer pins there between my fingers. We have some magnets here. I think these go in the doors to keep the doors shut. And then finally, we've got some more pins there on the end. Okay, so you can see for this kit, I think tweezers are going to be necessary, especially if you've got stumps like these. And then here we've got a bag of screws. So all these screws have very, very small heads. Give them a bit of a scatter about. They all have very small heads and they look as though they're all countersunk as well. So they're going to be hardly visible when the model is built. So very nice indeed. Got some nuts in there as well. So that's our uh, bag of greeblies there. I'm going to get something to crap around this and then I'll come back. Right, next up we've got our wheel rims, which are beautifully turned in aluminium or aluminium if you're on the other side of the pond. Um, that one's got a tiny bit of damage on it. But uh, yeah, absolutely stunning. Beautifully turned. You've got the little rim there. So you're going to get that really lovely effect of the rim on the tyre. <clears throat> you've also got the rim on the inside as well. You've got a lip. So, um, yeah, beautifully done. You've got rears there and the fronts there. Again, you've got that lovely rim on the edge. Beautifully represented. So they're going to look stunning with the white metal centres in them as well. I'm going to put them over there because I'm going to package them up separately because they've been rattling around against each other. And like I say, that one there has got damage. I can only hope that's the inner face. Um, but, uh, if not, I'll stick it up in the lathe and I'll give that a touch just to get rid of that damage. Um, I'm just hoping that's the inner face, not the outer face. So moving forward, let's have a look in this box. We've got this lovely plastic box. It's almost like getting Ferrero Rocher, isn't it? So what have we got in here? We have 
our front bumper or front lower valance. As you can see, it's all resin, it's not plastic, but it is quite flexible and uh, it is beautifully, beautifully cast. I'm sure it's probably polyurethane. You can see here we've got a, basically a guide, as I said earlier, we've got a guide that shows you basically where the holes are, but then you're left to drill them yourself. So lots of drills required. I think they tell you what sizes they are. Here we've got a sprue. I've never seen, it must be injection molded resin, I'm guessing. Um, this is all your resin parts. So this is going to be your rear mud guards, I'm guessing. You've got the inner door panels here. This is your co-driver's foot rest. And then we've got the actual engine block itself, which looks very accurate. And then we've got the, looks like the instrument, top of the instrument panel there. So uh, all beautifully done and all still on the sprues. It's amazing actually because when I've watched the um, reviews on Car Modeling Tube, he generally gets his kits and all the parts are broken off, or a lot of them are. So here we've got a bag of uh, parts. We've got some resin, that one's broken off. We've got some resin seats there, which are very nice indeed. We've got some more splash guards for the mud guards by the look of it. And then we've got our actual fuel tanks themselves there. The seats have the uh, cross on the back. I didn't see any decals to do the um, to do the backs of the seats, but maybe in this day and age they didn't have that. But uh, maybe I could get some Kevlar decal from somewhere else anyway. And then here we have another part broken off. We've got outer doors, as you can see, very very sharply moulded, beautifully nice clean edges. And then we've got the rear quarter panels there, rear air intakes for the side, front inner hood inner bonnet and then we've got the lower part of the um, front clamshell so that's going to be the end of the sills isn't it and it looks like that there is our spare wheel so beautifully done all beautifully molded one little bit of flash in there look and that's it and then we've got that part there which is the other side which is going to go up against the the back of the door like so so you can see the side of the 037 starting to come together so there we are what do you call it do you call it an 037 a 037 an 037 I've always called them 037 which is actually incorrect isn't it because it's not O it's zero or not you could call it a 037 this doesn't sound right does it the care and attention put in here guys is just absolutely amazing and to those of you that are thinking it's too much money it's you know this was like 500 pound with delivery um when you consider all of this is handmade it's all handmade it's all hand packaged it's limited run you know it's uh, it's beautifully beautifully made lovely 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 stuff and uh, i think it's worth every penny so here we've got the Here we've got the clamshell. You know, when you consider the main GT40 retails at like £300, you know, it's uh, it's not bad at all, is it? But then when you compare it to the Trumpeter GT40 at £88, it's quite expensive. So here we've got our front grill. You can see typical, that's your front end there, looking lovely. And that's all nice and straight and flat, no distortion in that. It's all lovely. Looks like it might have a bit of a twist in it, but there's no problem to get that out at all. Oh, it's got a great big sprue nib there, that's why. So if we cut that away, you can find a pair of cutters. If I cut part of that away, I'll be careful because it might just shatter. Blame it, it's hard. If I've got part of that away, you can see that's what's causing the problem. So there we go. So there's our beautiful front end. Really, really nicely done. You can see how big it is. It's, put it between my hands. It's huge. And then we've got the beautiful clamshell to go on the back. The 037 is such a good looking car. And that has got a twist in it, you can see. That has got a definite twist in it. But I'll um I'll just run it under the hot tap, hold it like that, and then just it'll just take its shape back straight away. So that'll be no problem at all. So that's that's the actual main bot parts of the body. And then here. We have the central tub. Come on, 
bloody sticky sellotape in Japan. Let's uh, cut this tape. There we go. And there's even more tape. Right. And more tape. You see, they're taking the care here to wrap everything together nice and tightly. And that keeps everything from knocking against each other and rubbing around. So in here we have, get rid of the bag. So we have, this God, that weighs a ton. This is the main roof. You can see, we, oh, it's broken up. It has got some damage. But this is the beauty of revit, resin, guys. If that was plastic, it would be stretched, distorted and everything, and it would be in a right mess. This, being resin, you can see, it's just a clean break. So all you do is hold that apart, get some, some super glue in there, and just stick that together. You can see when I push it together, it completely disappears. See the break? And then now it's gone. And that is the beauty of resin. And that'll be as good as new when it's glued back together. So I'm not bothered about that in the slightest. You all know we've had plastic car kits where the roofs are all bent and distorted. And you can't get them back because once the plastic stretches, that's it, you've had it. But I'm um, not going to worry about that at all. You can see that rear clam. We can see now how distorted that is. When we put that down, you can see the rear clam isn't flat. But that's, you know, it's part and parcel of resin. It's not, it's not a problem at all. But I love the way they've done this. The actual stiffening panels in there, that's all correct for this car. So, uh, very, very nice indeed. So that's our main body. Then we've got here... These are our, this is vacuum formed, so this is our windscreen here, you can see the windscreen there. Watching that guy on car model tube do this is amazing, he grabs that out of the packet, grabs a pair of scissors, do, 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 gets a saddest stick, quick clean up on the edges, and glues it in. It's amazing to watch him work, absolutely amazing. But here we've got the vacuum formed side windows as well, so I have to be very, very careful cutting these out. Um, I would advise go around with a black pen and mark the line first before you start cutting. But, um, that's those there. Then we've got this is the rear internal bulkhead, which is gorgeous. That's all nice. It's got the correct shaped ends there with the welded in stiffeners. And then we've got the beautiful massive rear spoiler. We've got holes. It looks like that's ready for putting rivets in all across the back as well. So that's going to sit on the back of there. Like... Well, the bulkhead's getting in the way. So that's going to sit on the back of that, and you can see then you've got typical 037 rear end. So that's all lovely. And then we have here, this is the actual floor. Very thick floor. Um, totally flat, no twist whatsoever. You can see all the moulded detail underneath and all the moulded detail inside. We've got the inner sills with the, the pressings in there, the circles pressed in the sides. Very, very nicely done. Very, very beautifully done. Lovely, lovely, uh, lovely, lovely model. So there we go. So that's all the resin parts. So let's have a break for two minutes and we'll have a look at the white metal. Right, I'm back. Just one point, I've had a look through my magnifier and this, what I thought was damage on these wheel rims, is actually the spot where the valve goes. So, I need new glasses, I really do, guys. So, um, anyway, so I'm going to leave those out. As I say, I'm going to package those away so they don't get damaged. So, onto the white metal bits. As we saw in the box, these all come um, wrapped in uh, cling film, individual bags. And then they've double-sided tape in the bottom of the box holding these all together. So, really, really nice job. So what we're going to do, the, the first thing, I've, I've just bought a, um, I saw the guy on Car Modeling Tube again use it, uh, a magnetic tumbler. And basically it's a, a rotary tumbler. If you want to see it, let me know in the comments and I will show you. Um, but basically it's just a, a bowl of water with stainless steel, magnetic stainless steel pins that goes around and around and around and changes direction. And what you do is you stick all these parts in and basically what it does, it, um, it gets all that just cleans them all up and they all come out as bright white metal so that will be really really nice and it gets rid of any scales or burring or anything so as you can see these are sellotaped down so I'm going to cut this 
set the tape away like so. There we go. Then we can take the sellotape off the bags. They have the stickiest sellotape I have ever seen in Japan. Absolutely amazing. So uh, go away. Right, so we get rid of that. And we can get rid of that and get rid of that. Right, so start with the big bag first. What have we got in here? Let's just have a look at the quality. I see that this is actually when when I think of white metal, I think of the undercarriage legs by um, is it scale aircraft conversions, and they're always really really soft and easy to bend. And uh, yeah, and this is similar. Feels a little harder, but basically um, it's it's kind of designed. You can once you build it up, it'll be very very strong. But you can see here we've got a bend. You've got a bend in that bar there. But it's really easy just to come along and just straighten it out. Okay, and that's it. So this is what the guy was saying, you know, when, when you build these models, they give you these supports that go into the body. Use the support so the body is sitting on, is taking the weight and not all the suspension. So we can see here we've got white metal parts and we have got flash around the edges of them, but that'll be taken off by the tumbler. And then we do some sanding. You can see we've got here, we've got dimple marks. This is where we're going to be doing our drilling so that screws, nuts and bolts and everything go in. But you can see the actual standard of the casting itself. You know, we've got all the, as the car would have, the different positions there, all the different positions for the wishbones to go in or suspension mounts to go in or whatever. And then you've got here the, the pivoting joints and it's just all beautifully, beautifully cast and really, really well thought. There's nothing toy-like about it at all, which, you know, in 12 scale, is often difficult to avoid. You can see on here you've got the trailing link that's coming from the front of the subframe and you've got an upper and a lower hole so they could they could change the height of the trailing link um, and change the car's dive characteristics under braking. But uh, yeah, beautifully done. You can see it's just typical white metal with the tabs where you can see with them They've been broken off, and the uh, and the mold seems there. Yeah, <laughs> that's look at the shape of that. That's going to be really easy to straighten out. And we've got a dash panel here. Got to drill a hole out there. I remember seeing that in the instructions. So I'll have to check. I can't remember if this is painted black or if it's flocked. Dash plate there underneath. You can see that's got a bow in it. Not worried about that at all. And then we've got the bash plate for the rear. That's where the engine's going to go. Again, these are all bent. And then we've got some convoluted hosing. It looks like it's about to break. I probably won't use this, actually, because I've got some convoluted hosing that is this size. So we can see more supports there. That's parts of the uh, frame for the back end by the look of it. Anti-roll bar, part of the framework. I'm not going to straighten any of this out now, that's pointless. Centre console or centre frame. This is the, the centre steel section through the middle of the car. You can see they've made this separate so that you can see the holes going through. A little bit of flash in that one. But, um, really, really nice. Beautifully done. And uh, as I say, the beauty of white metal is it can be straightened out, you can press it onto something flat, you can squeeze it with pliers, you can you know, do whatever you need to do with it and straighten it all out and get it all looking lovely, which is the benefit. The disadvantage to it is it's not very strong. So when you get, <laughs> when you get aircraft like the 30 second scale Lancaster and it's got plastic undercarriage legs, which are quite large, when you replace them with the white, not, not the brass ones, not the aircraft brass ones, they're completely different story. They are solid and awesome. But these, the, the scale aircraft conversions ones, are white metal and they will bend. So, you know, it's, it's worth remembering that. If you've got a big heavy, heavy model, go for brass undercarriage rather than white undercarriage. But uh, white metal, should I say. But this is all lovely. Really, really nice. Really, really pleased with it. You know, the moulded on, or the cast on detail, should I say. It's beautiful. And the way they do this, there's white, uh, Model Factory Hero have actually got a video on YouTube and it shows you their manufacturing process. <clears throat> and they do this by gravity. They've basically got a great big mould um, that's in a centrifuge. 
and they put the mould in the centrifuge, put the lid on, they have a little vat there with, with white metal and then they spin it up and they pour the white metal into the vat and it all just gets thrown out in the centrifuge and all the parts come off this like spider tree and then the tree gets cut off all the parts and then goes back in the vat for remelting. So that's that little lot there. So that could all go over there and then get rebagged in a minute. Then we've got this little lot here. Which is awesome. You can see hundreds of parts. Lots and lots of parts. So you've got the main roll cage there. Okay, really, really nice. You can see my fingers are getting dirty. We've got the cam boxes. See those cam boxes are stunning. In fact, you may even want to leave it like that and not even paint it because it looks like freshly cast aluminium. We've got the Abarth cam cover caps there, so that's going to go in there like that. So you get the idea, there's your um, cam covers. There's another cam cover there. There's probably another cam box, there's another cam box there, so we've got those. And then we've got the, this is one of the side plates that goes in the back end down the side of the engine, there's the other side. So they're going to go in down there and they're sort of protecting all the the engine from all the muck and crap being thrown up by the wheels and we've got another plate there I'm guessing that's going to go underneath there's the other side there <clears throat> splash guards more splash guards transmission look at the molding on that look at the casting that's absolutely stunning really really nice as I say and I've said it a million times there's nothing toy luck about this and they go together like that and they can see they fit together beautifully then you've got your bellows in there and then you're going to have your flywheel going in which I'm assuming is in this <clears throat> packet. I've got a flog in my throat again. No it's not. You've got a flywheel with a clutch that's going to go in there and that's going to go onto the back of the engine. Um, not quite sure what those bits are. All those. That's part of the supercharger. That's the other half of the supercharger. So they're going to go together like that. And then you've got the ends going on, like so. So there's your Volumex supercharger. Another part of the rear suspension. That's the other, that's the sides. So that's going to be the main suspension mounts there. Again, you've got all these different mounting positions for the, uh, for the suspension arm. So you can alter all the caster, camber, toe. Bump steer, dive, everything. That's a frame for something that's probably for the radiator, I'm guessing. And then we've got an upper window frame there for one of the doors. It's nice that they've made those out of white metal, so they're going to be strong. Not necessarily strong as in unbending, but they won't just snap if they were made of resin. Another radiator frame there. Lower wishbone, or upper wishbone, I'm not sure which, whichever is which. More wishbones there by the look of things or parts of the chassis. Uh, yeah. More pits there, not sure what they are. Drive shafts. Drive shafts with the C boots, the CV rubbers and everything on the end. And you can see they've got the CV boots actually cast as being sort of folded over, which is a really nice touch. <clears throat> we got some pedals here by the look of things. No, nope, something else. I don't know what that is. Which bones for the front suspension by the look of it? There's one, there's two. Let's see, yeah. Another one of those things. More bits of the framework. Door mirrors. Beautifully cast. Uh, yeah. That's probably an engine mount. More bits of framework. These are the supports that go on the um, front of the rear clamshell. Another engine mount there. Look at that. Look how lovely that engine mount is. Isn't that lovely. More suspension parts. And then you've got those little corner gussets there. I remember those going into the fronts of the actual tub itself. So that can all go over there. I've got to go through the checklist and check I've got all this. Check it's all here. <clears throat> it 
dear, 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 my throat today is terrible. So, a little that final bag here. So we've got a couple of wheel centers. So I'm guessing these are the, no, they must be the rears. So they're gonna, look how well they fit in there, maybe. That's gonna drop in there, so there's one of your wheels. No plastic here, boys, just all, all metal, all lovely. And you can imagine with those beautiful Pirelli tires on, they're gonna look stunning. So that's that tube, I'm assuming it's an intake tube or a dump valve, so I can't remember what it, what it was, but uh, here's back end of the gearbox. Headlamp frame mounts by the look of things. Should be four of those, yep, four of those, all nice and round, not distorted, which is nice. Uh, yeah. Not quite sure what that is, whatever it is. And then we've got, that's part of the intake plenum by the look of it, and we've got a barth on there, as you can see, moulded on. <clears throat> and then we've got this box here, whatever that is. Looks like that's going to go together like so. Another something or other, whatever it is. Uh, what's that? Looks like a part of the distributor, perhaps. And then that looks like part of the linkage for the handbrake. Oh, bits and pieces, bits and pieces, bits and pieces coming out of our ears. And then we've got another bag here, and I don't think I'll bother opening this. We'll just have a quick look at the brakes. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to bore you guys to death. Probably sort of switched off by now. I'm probably talking to no one. Lovely packaging, isn't it? Really, really nice. Right, so we can take that out of there. And we can get that out of there. Get rid of the cardboard. Get rid of the clean film. And we're done. Right. So we got. Bags and bags and bags and bags of bits. Bloody sticky tape, Jesus. Right, some of these brakes. Here we go, look, oh God, I'm glad I opened this one. So we've got our brake discs here. So let's see if they've made the same mistake as Meg and Itinerary. So that one's going to the left, that one's going to the right. That one's going to the right. That one's going to the right. To the right. To the left. To the left. To the left. So when we put these together, we have these pins to put them together. Okay, so it looks like they're the same front and back. So what we've basically got is a disc that we can use either way, which is a nice touch. I'm assuming they're all the same. Yeah, so we've got... So that's really cool. So you can use these discs either way as you could on the real car, I'm guessing. No, you couldn't. Shut up, noise. Don't be talking rubbish. Um, so you can use these discs either way round, and then you can get the, the grooves on the disc and the vents going the right way. Unlike Itinerary have done with their Integrali or Meng have done with their GT40. So, um, nice touch. Well done. Well done, Model Factory Hero. In fact, what I could do is take a moulding of these in resin <clears throat> and use these in the Lancia, if they're the right size. 
but um, they're manufactured in such a way you've got those two pins to align them so they can only go together one way but uh, yeah they're the same front and back so you can have your discs the right way round yay finally so we've got here we've got vents for the back of the um, back of the bonnet here we have look at that look at those bolt heads look at them they've even got the dimple in the top just like the real thing beautiful beautiful more of the same there more of the same there and more of the same there we've got cam police these guys they are stunning Those cam pulleys, lovely, the teeth on them, it's a shame you're not going to see them because it's all out the front of the engine, um, not sure what they are but they're something, looks like they're hubs that go in the wheels or something, another one there, and then we've got the actual bells for the disc brakes, so did Lancia make them so they could be used front and back? We've got four there the same by the look of it. So now we can just check. We can just quickly check that. If I put those together, I can put that bell in that side. Okay, so that will give me a break for the left hand side. And then I can turn it over and I can put that bell in that side and that will give me a break for the right hand side so awesome so that's lovely very nicely done we got our calipers uh, are they bigger on the front we have different size calipers as you can see looks like they're all four pots Yeah, they're all four pots, but they're going to go together lovely, just like so. Not sure if that's the right one that goes with that one. But yeah, they're going to look lovely, and then you've got the pins to go through that lock the... Um, that lock the brake pads in as well so that's going to really add to it if you're doing a sort of display with the wheel removed that one's smaller by the look of it but it does go together you have to be careful with the blues and getting them matched up more bolts there look we've got different bolt heads but they are gorgeous i love things like that rather than having to look at screw heads we've got some little parts here whatever they may be Oh, they're the, um, look at that, they're the parts for the bloody harnesses, rather than having, look at that, you know, on the harnesses they've got the actual piece like that, they, they, instead of just um, instead of just flat, it's actually got a shape into it, and these are the stands that go underneath, so these are the pieces that sit underneath the bodywork, and it's telling you to use them and then shave them off in height if you want them lower, I mean, you could always just, Put a couple of strips of bolts under there or something. And then we've got more of those bolts. So there we are. That's beautiful. Um, so there we go, guys. And then we just got more and more and more. You can see we've got roll cage parts in here. More wheel parts. I'm going to call that a day for this review. If you are really interested and you want to see the contents of these three bags, let me know in the comments below and I'll do another video. Um, because this has gone on now for how long? This has gone on for an hour and a half, is it? Um, so I think that's long enough for anyone to sit and listen to me bloody rambling on. So um, we'll call it a day there. And uh, so this has been a review of this absolutely stunning kit from Model Factory Hero um, of the Lancia Rally 037. Uh, stunning, stunning model, stunning, stunning car. And it's just, well, it's just amazing, isn't it? I'm absolutely so chuffed I got it. And it's one of those you just keep hold of and cherish because it's unobtainium within a few months so um there we go so thanks for watching i'll see you all soon as i say if you want to see the contents of these bags i will review them and if you want to see the rumbling thing i've got 
let me know and I'll review that as well. I'm well, not so much review, I'll show it working. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But that's basically what I'm going to use to clean up all these wet metal parts. And they all come out really, really shiny and clean. And it helps to remove the um, bits of flash and edges and everything. So as I say, go take a look at car modelling tube. I'll put a link in the comments below. Take a look at car modelling tube and um, have a look at his builds. They're absolutely stunning. Really, really good and really, really interesting. No talking or anything. I think the guy, I think he's Korean. There's no talking or anything. It's just music. Some of the music's a bit, you know, but um, you can always put some other music on in the background. It's just fun to sit there and watch him create, you know, this from this bag of, you know, this bag of white metal scrap, if you like. From that comes an absolutely beautiful model. So um, go take a look. Well, guys, I've decided to continue. What's the point in doing a review of a half a kit? If you're not interested in seeing this, you can always fast forward or switch off or whatever. Or come back tomorrow and have a look to... I'd do this in the meantime I've actually been out I've uh, got a little bit of shopping and I've been and got some I went to B&M which in for those not in the UK B&M is like a junk store really they sell just sell a lot of stuff um, <clears throat> but basically two pounds you can see great little storage box and this will be perfect for putting these bits in like this and as you can see you've got all these little compartments this one long compartment at the end and what I've just done is just got one and it's wet because I've just washed it out. I've basically cut the partitions out of there, so you've got these larger partitions for the larger parts. So, um, so basically, you know, you can fit stuff like that in there that wouldn't otherwise go in there, and you know, just that hose there wouldn't normally fit in. So, basically, now we've got a box that we can put our stuff in. So, step one, step two, step three, step three, and, and that, and so on. And that's exactly what car modeling tube does. And if I copy what he does, then it should all be okay. So here we go then. So what have we got here? That looks like shock absorber bottoms to me. Don't know about you, but that looks like the bottom of shock absorbers. So there we go. We've got some coolant hoses here. And as you can see, we've got on the ends of them, beautifully moulded. I've cut my finger, guys, just here. So if you're a bit queasy, if it starts bleeding, I'm sorry, I'll stop. But um, you can see on the end here, a bit of wood. On the end of there, you've got a... Um, the Jubilee clips and that all waiting to be painted, so that'll look lovely. Uh, more hoses there, more hoses there again. Jubilee clips. Oh no, this one's got um, this one's got the good ridge fitting on the end of it. You see there, so uh, clear red, clear blue over some silver. That look amazing. And then we got some. I don't know, there are some little bits and pieces there. Then we've got the gear shift. And some other little greeblies and bits and pieces there on that sprue. As you can see, they're lovely. We have... Do, 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 don't know what that is. Might be part of the steering column, I'm guessing. I don't know, but uh, it's bent anyway. Bracket of some sort. More hosing. Uh, what's this here? Do you know? More of... I don't know. Top mounts, I'm not sure. There's some kind of fuel filler or oil filler there. See the lovely detail on the cap. Some supports or suspension parts. More hosing. Ooh, we've got a pedal box here. Look at this. Now that's lovely, isn't it? When you compare that to some of the plastic kit stuff, that's really, really nice. The detail on the bottom of there it's lovely lovely thin rod of some sort another thin rod of some sort another one there we've got some um end fittings i'm not sure if that's going to be banjo fittings for hoses or if that's um i'm not sure if that's banjo fittings for hoses or if it's uh Suspension mount endings, um, throttle pedal there by the look of it, very nice indeed, you see the detail on the surface, that looks to me like waste skates, I'm thinking, Little waste skates there, and there's a top of your distributor cap, 
Some little is that door handles there, I'm thinking. Little gauge cluster there with, I don't know, some little levers or something. God knows. <laughs> a lot of these parts are unidentifiable. Little brackets and stuff there. And there's a little, there's a master cylinder there, look, and then there's a slave cylinder there. And then we've got some, God bless me, these are lovely. There's a little Goodridge, there's little hose fittings there, look. Very nice indeed. Lovely little hose fittings. Oops. More nuts and bolts and threaded fittings, hose fittings and whatever there. Some ducting of some sort, I'm guessing. Another lever and a little tie rod of some sort. More piping, some more piping, more hose fittings, more piping. Uh, I'm not sure if that's hose fittings or bolts. They're tiny anyway. Is that a windscreen wiper arm? Yeah, windscreen wiper arm. You can see with the old fashioned separate arm on it to keep the wiper tangential. there some sort of steering linkage I'm guessing some more little pulleys little tiny toothed pulleys look very very nice indeed some more fittings some more little tiny fittings and bits and pieces more pulleys you can see there the adjustable part on the front of the hub. Doop do doop do do. So that might be the bottom of the distributor, some sort of bracket for something. And then we've got radiator cap. And not sure what they are, but they're something other are they master cylinders. I wonder if this has got any generic parts in it that, no, that aren't used in this kit, but because they've got a fret with them on, then you get them featured in the in the model. Some bigger bolts there, you can see they are lovely. Really, really nice. And then they've got the, you can see the bolt heads on them, hexagonal bolt heads. Which are very nice indeed. Don't know what they are, but uh, there's four of them. Another hose, more fittings, see there more different type of fitting, rods and ends, master cylinders, look at them, they're gorgeous, they're lovely aren't they, more bolts, wow, it's never ending isn't it, that's the handbrake lever by the look of it. So that's the handbrake lever with the master cylinder on it. So obviously that's going to get straightened out. Uh, there's our steering gear. It's a switch gear for the steering column. And then there's another one there. So there's the two. There's another wiper arm without the uh, separate link. More hydraulic fittings. More hydraulic fittings, another hose and some more fittings. So, all in all, <coughs> excuse me, very, very nice indeed. And then the penultimate bag. Bigger parts here. Looks like that's the exhaust silencer. So that's going to go together like that. See, nice exhaust silencer there. Got some front wheel centers, so they're going to go in like that. So there's your front wheels. How lovely do they look, hey? Wow, stunningly beautiful. Roll cage, 
parts I'm guessing dump valve I'm thinking I oh, know that's a shock absorber that's a front shock absorber look at it you can see the it's got the top hat on there with the adjustable spring platform we've got an upright no doubt that's the front upright that's going to be a rear upright I'm looking at there's another upright there there's another front upright that's weird we've got like six uprights Ooh, strange and there's another shock absorber part by the look of it and there's a spacer for the wheel hubs another one there so there's four of those track rod end again you can see you've got the, the molded on lock nut there you've got the rose joint on the end and you've got the rubber gator there wiper blade which is lovely really really nicely done and then we've got some more shock absorbers there's another trap rod end some piping uh, that looks like hinges it's going to be for the front or for the main rear clam another shock absorber there wishbone another wishbone there some sort of bracketry for something or other roll cage tubing a license plate holder some sort of little bracket anyway another filler oil filler there or fuel filler I haven't got a clue what they are there's some sort of clamp or pivot for the uh, that's, that's the hinges isn't it for the front end I think but then there's some Thin rods there, which are bent. Another oil filler cap. Lovely. More hinges. Another wiper blade. Another number plate holder by the look of it. Some more of these bolts. Tiny, tiny bolts. Really, really small. And there's some more tubing there. There's some little brackets. That's part for hinges, I think piece there I'm not sure some more bolts so that's all uh, that's that one and then the final bag looks like we've got some nice big bits in here interesting transmission parts by the look of it as I say this will all get rumbled and polished and everything so what we got here we have that looks like to me a fuel pump fuel injector pump you see the detail there where the pipes are going to go in the top Detail on the side, got some flash to clean off of there. Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. There's our battery. Remember, we've got separate battery terminals to go on there. <clears throat> There's the grill. I thought that said E only, but we've actually got one. Maybe it was a different part that was E only. Um, don't know what that is. It's some sort of mounts onto something and allows. There's an air intake for the supercharger. There's our cylinder head, which is lovely, beautifully done. Got the flanges on there for the turbo manifold and for the, uh, for the supercharger manifold. No, for the exhaust manifold, Clown, and the inlet manifold. There we go, more bracketry there. Another bit of something, I'm not sure what that is. Electrical box by the look of it. it might be an ECU or something radiator fan for the electric fan It's lovely nice casting on there. There's one of our options for the instrument panel And then there's our other option for the instrument panel. So they go that way up don't they? Let's do some research and see which is which water pump This is part of the supercharger Steering wheel, that is lovely isn't it, the steering wheel is lovely, it's got, got the bolt detail in the centre. Uh, can't work out what that is but it's round and it's got some detail on the end, you can see there which is very nice. Um, 
part of a blower valve, part of a shock absorber, not too sure. There's an exhaust header there and there should be another one of those. There's one there. So exhaust pipe in, here we go, all our exhaust system here, look. Nice big chunky headers. The white piece there. So that's all very nice. Oil filter. Um, not sure what that is, but it's a box of some sort. There's our sump, dry sump with the uh, scavenge pipes coming out of there. Bell housing, and here's our lovely clutch and flywheel. So you've got the flywheel there, and you've got the clutch on the back face, which is very nicely done. So if you want to display it with it apart, you can. Front face of the alternator with the pressed steel cooling fan on there. Got a fire extinguisher if it's a fire extinguisher or some sort of cylinder. Uh, I'm not sure what this is but it looks like it's a big mounting for the supercharger perhaps. That bellows is lovely. The finish, you could just leave that as it is couldn't you? Really really nice. Um, that's going to be an inner sill, design, that inner sill structure for something because it's got those pressings in it. Switch panel, I'm guessing that's a switch panel for the driver. And then we've got an end plate here for the supercharger. Looks like it's got the Abarth on there and there's the other end. Another cylinder there, so obviously oxygen, um, a fire extinguisher or something. Then we've got this bracing piece there, like a gusset. We've got another mounting for something rather there. There's our steering column with the central input on it. Um, engine parts, starter motor by the look of it. Back of the alternator there. Um, that's going to be a mounting for something rather on the engine. There's those heater pipes, those four pipes running underneath the car. From the center there's our front cover and our rear cover you can see on the end of there we've got crankshaft detail on the end of that rear cover there you can see it's almost like it's almost real it's beautiful um, there's another end cover for some drive belt there some mounting that to me looks like a bag for the windscreen washers you've got the motor in the bottom and the little filler cap in the top uh, part of the subframe at the front, I'm guessing. God only knows what that is. It's about the same size as the bellows, so I don't know what that is. And then more and more little bits and pieces. And then we've got a... Is that an electrical box or is that a, a display for the uh, navigator? I think that's probably a box with the uh, light buttons on for the navigator. The co-driver, should I say. And then, finally, some little plate there with some detail on it. And that is it. So that we've been through those hundreds of parts. I haven't actually counted how many parts there are. I might do that. But there's certainly a lot. <laughs> well, hell of a lot. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. And it's, it has gone on for quite a while, I know. What's it been? Oh, I don't know, nearly two hours. <laughs> um, but well worth it. Well worth the review kit. I've also got the Beta Monte Carlo Group 5 Turbo, as you know. The, the, the big long one with the huge back end and six foot six wide and a great big wing on it and everything. So I'll be reviewing that as well, um, but not just yet. I want to get all these parts sorted, check they're all here, get them sorted into their correct numbers, and then we'll get them rumbled and polished and um, go from there. But I want to build this. I probably won't do a video build of it as such. I'll probably pop in and out of it, but it's, uh, it's going to be certainly a very, very, very involved build. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the thumbs up if you've liked the video. If you haven't liked it, hit the dislike twice. And um, if you want to donate to the channel, you can see underneath the video, there's a link to Patreon where you can go and uh, donate a pound a month. Um, I do no benefits for anybody in Patreon other than you know that you're, you're donating to the channel. All the money you donate goes into buying bits and pieces. The one I'm concentrating on at the moment is better lighting. So... Uh, Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.